Am I wrong for leaving my sister in the hospital while she had a stillbirth because I had to do my MCAT? I know a lot of people know what it is, but if you don't, it's the medical college admission test. My sister Mia and I are usually close, but this is really causing some issues. I genuinely didn't think I did anything wrong, but I do want some insight, and by the way, this happened in April. Also, if you're curious, I'm 22 and she's 28. Mia had a high-risk pregnancy, placenta previa, and some other issues. She eventually had to get a C-section a week earlier than expected, but the baby was still born. I had my MCAT the day after Mia delivered, and she told me she wanted me to stay with her. We talked before they took her in, and she was a screaming, crying mess. That's awful. I ended up leaving since I had my exam early morning, and I came back to the hospital as soon as I finished. I did hear the awful news that the baby was stillborn before the exam, but I didn't go then. So a few days passed, and Mia's super pissed. Am I wrong for leaving my sister in the hospital while she had a stillbirth because I had to do my MCAT? I ended up leaving because I had my exam early morning and I came back to the hospital as soon as I finished. I did hear the awful news that the baby was stillborn before the exam, but I didn't go then. So a few days passed and Mia super pissed at me. She's saying that I ditched her during the worst time of her life and I told her I was really sorry. But I really had to do my MCAT. I know she's going through a very difficult time, but she completely went off on me saying that I could have done it any other day. She told me that I thought some test was more important than her and her baby's life and that I deserved to fail. Mia's still saying I'm selfish and at the least I could have gone to the exam directly from the hospital and stayed with her the rest of the time. A lot of extended family know now and some are saying what I did was terrible. My mom agrees with me but is saying to let Mia be because she's going through a trauma. Turns out you guys were right, but we'll get it in. Firstly, I unblocked Mike this morning and called him to talk. After a few hours of arguing, I finally got the truth out of him. He said after I told him about my past, he was fine with it because it happened before him. Then he got curious about who Jake and Adam were. So he went digging on my Facebook friend list and didn't find Jake, but he found Adam. He then condemned me for having an ex on my social media page. I said I don't speak to the majority of the people on my Facebook, but I wouldn't delete them. I just won't engage. He said that in his eyes, that was a red flag, so he went digging. And he found what he was looking for. He saw that Adam was well-known and well-liked by a lot of women because of the women liking and commenting on his posts and by the cards and trips he posted prior. He knew that Adam had to be well-off. He also admitted to knowing some of the women who were in Adam's comments. He then tried digging into Adam's friend list, but it was hidden. So he asked Jessica to stalk his likes, comments, and posts for a Jake. Sure enough, they found Jake. Saw that Jake drove an expensive car and came to the conclusion that I only date men with money. No, Mike doesn't have money, so his entire analysis was dumb. Anyway, I asked him why he just didn't come to me and he confessed that for a while he thought I was interested in Jake and Adam for money because that's what women do. He then said that him and Jessica brought the situation up to his guy friends and they all agreed that this is how the situation went. I was dating Jake. He introduced me to Adam. I found out Adam had more money than Jake. I left Jake to sleep with Adam then started dating him. I questioned why I would leave Adam if I was with him for money and he said he thought that was a lie and Adam had to be the one to leave me. Ouch. He then said that he contemplated breaking up with me over this for months but as he got to know me he slowly realized I'm not that kind of person. I told him that he's basically full of shit for dirtying my name with his friends. Then I asked him why he didn't clear up my name. He said whenever he brought me up, they all dismissed me as a gold digger, a thon, a woman who slept with men for money, and here's the kicker. Probably still have some of that money saved. They came to the conclusion that I must be with Mike for some ulterior motive, but he was too embarrassed to defend me. He also said that he was embarrassed every time I mentioned a male friend or tagged any guy on social media because they all teased him afterwards. I remember him asking me not to like any other man's photo on social media and to not tag any guys, but I just thought it's because it made him uncomfortable, not because his friends were silently stalking me. After hearing all of this, I decided to end things with Mike. I told him that he's not a nice person and I can't trust him anymore, especially because he knew I was saving for months to afford the PS5, and he even allowed his friends to think that I got my money somewhere else. After ending it, I said, Oh, by the way, have you ever slept with Jessica? He said no, but after she found Jake, she suggested that they hook up if he ever needs to get back at me in the future. I asked what she meant by getting back at me, and he said that she was certain I would cheat on him with a wealthier man if I found one. He then said that he gave me the truth after all these years, so I should forgive him and give him another chance but I didn't. I just thanked him for the good times, the memories, and for dirtying my name. Then I hung up and blocked him again. Now I think I'll take another long break from the dating world. Thanks again, everyone. Am I the asshole for making a scene after my sisters-in-law announced their pregnancies at my birthday as a gift? Disclaimer, this is not my story. I will list the source in the caption of this video. 
My 24 female boyfriend, 24 male, has two sisters, Emily, 30 female, and Diane, 32 female. They are both married and trying for a baby. Diane announced her first pregnancy at Mother's Day this year. She gifted her mother a baby shoe and a positive pregnancy test. Everyone was happy and even more when Emily told everyone that she also was trying for a baby. Later that evening, I texted both of them saying, congratulations, I'm happy for you. It's a bit weird for me and my boyfriend because we recently learned that I'm sterile. I hope I didn't cut the mood, but I'm really excited for the both of you. They sent me some texts assuring me that everything was well. Sadly, Diane lost her baby two months after this party. Fast forward to last week. Fast forward to last week. My mother-in-law, both sisters-in-law, and I met for a girls' night. My mother-in-law wanted to organize a party for my birthday, so she asked me if it was okay and what I wanted to do. I said fine, but birthdays are tough for me. When I grew up, my parents always made my birthdays about them. They never invited my friends or close family. They always invited their colleagues and friends. They had big parties where they drank a lot of alcohol, so after, I wanted to be sure to have a small party with close family. Around 12 people, so nothing really big. The party was yesterday. I was helping my mother-in-law when both of my sisters-in-law and their husband arrived. They both also brought their in-laws and some friends. So what was supposed to be a small party ended up with more than 40 people. My mother-in-law was a bit irritated because we had to go buy more drinks and food for the uninvited guests. The party went well and it was gift time. I opened my gift from my mother-in-law, then father-in-law, then one for my boyfriend. It was sweet. Next were my sister-in-law's gift. They gifted me one small package for them both, which is fine. I asked for small gifts if they were willing to give one. I opened it and it was a small size shirt. I was more of an extra large than a small, saying best future on. There was also written with marker times two. The package also contained two positive pregnancy tests and a photo of them touching their bellies. I looked them in the eyes asking, are you pregnant? They both said yes. Emily took the shirt out of my hands and showed it to everyone. As I was starting to cry, I ran outside, my boyfriend following me. I had a panic attack. When I came back, everybody was happy. They were all congratulating the pregnant couples. I felt really sad. My boyfriend talked to his parents and we left the party without saying anything to anybody. In the evening, I received some nasty texts from some of my boyfriend's family saying things like, why did you ruin their announcement? It was only a birthday party, please grow up. I do feel bad. My boyfriend was planning on telling them to fuck off, but I don't want him to ruin relationships with his family. My father-in-law and mother-in-law called me to apologize, saying things got out of hand. So was I the asshole for making a scene? Am I wrong for saying it's easy to be the perfect mom when you don't have kids to someone who's infertile? Oh, that is, a, that is brutal! But I feel like you have a reason for saying it, hopefully. I, 28 female, have a two-year-old son. My brother, Tommy, 25 male, has been dating Gianna, 22 female, for a few months now. She's a little judgmental, not of me particularly, but in general. She babysits for other children and constantly judges the parents. She said she'd never let her kids act the way the kids do. Sometimes it'll make sense, and I agree. Others, she claims that her future kids will never, ever throw a tantrum. They'll accept no the first time and the only time. I've told her good luck with that when it comes to toddlers. My son is learning no and has appropriate consequences for tantrums, but he's learning. It'll happen. It's also important to note that Gia is infertile. She can't have kids without medical intervention or adoption. Saturday night, we went out for my dad's birthday dinner. I messed up and didn't prepare my toddler well enough. He got overstimulated and began melting down. He got overstimulated and began melting down. I quickly took him out of the restaurant to calm him down before he could cause a scene. It took all of five minutes and we returned. He got food and all was good. Gianna started on, my future kids will never act like that in a restaurant. I ignored her. The next day, myself, Tommy, our parents, my son, and Gianna went to the mall for an event they were having. My son was playing in a structure and I had my eyes on him. My mom asked me a question and I turned to answer her. When I turned back, he was gone. Panic sent in and myself, my parents, and Tommy, along with some people nearby, began helping me look. It only took a few minutes to find him and he was perfectly fine. He had seen a pretzel car and wandered off. I was still pretty worked up, holding on to him for dear life. He had never wandered off before. My mom was reassuring me, saying it happened to her with both of us kids. Then I hear Gianna, why weren't you watching him? I tried ignoring her. Then she said, I would have never let him wander off. I was already so worked up and upset and I snapped. I said, it's easy being a perfect parent when you don't have kids. Come back to me when you do. Gianna got visibly upset. She then made Tommy take her home. Tommy and Gianna have both texted me telling me how insensitive that is since she can't have kids. To me, she's talking about having kids all the time. So why is this different for me to say that? So am I the asshole? 